love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, this particular quality has a real drawing power to it. And so he tried to give me the natural, start trying to play suicidal thoughts in my mind, start having me question um, uh, me hearing from the Lord and all these other different areas. And I had to lean on a sister in Christ and um, because of her gentleness with me, um, because of her patience, because of her long suffering with me, um, I was able to receive the healing from the Lord by way of her encouraging words. So absolutely, gentleness will get you a long way. Once you are saved and have entered into a true personal relationship with the Lord, there is no turn turning back. Now, if God brings you a wonderful mate, wonderful children, and good and wonderful friends, then he will expect you to stay loyal and faithful to all of them in your own personal relationships with them. Now, I'm afraid this is one quality that is in low uh, short of supply in, in these times. I'm a brand new creature because the army that I'm new. I'm new. I'm new. All right, you guys, welcome back. Welcome back. We are back and we are teaching on the nine fruits of the spirit by way of BibleKnowledge.com. So if you guys are tuning in, please go get yourself caught up on this teaching. It has been truly impactful to say the utmost least. Okay. Now the nine fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Okay, now where we left off um, is uh, kindness, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and get into the continuation of the um, of the rest of these particular fruits. I'm hoping I can tackle all, um, all the, uh, the last four in this particular video. If not, we will have a final video on this particular teaching. And these are indications that you have the Holy Spirit present into your life. Now, most people think it's by way of laying a hands and and uh word of knowledge and all that 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 is you know gifts that the lord give you but the fruit of it and you know we know scripture that you will know them by their fruit now it, we will know if you have the holy spirit if you have those fruits if the fruit of these areas okay so people can be laying hands and prophesying and and and, and sin with us said the lord but they can be ugly on the inside. They can have no love. They can not be kind, right? And so I shared with you guys on the last video that you can see witches, warlocks be casting out demons and stuff like that, right? So no, it's, are they operating in the fruit, right? So let's go ahead and get into goodness, okay? Now the Bible says that it is the goodness of God that will lead sinners to repentance and salvation. The quality of goodness is another real powerful quality to have operating through you. Now, this particular quality has a real drawing power to it. All right. Not only does the goodness of God draw people direct to him, but this fruit of goodness operating in a believer can also draw people direct to God through the actual believer. All right. Now, spirit filled saints who are walking with many of these fruits operate through them are like magnets are like magnets. Many, many people who have been saved through an individual believer say that what drew them in was the love and goodness they saw shining through that believer. Now, Jesus says that we are to carry his light. And let that light shine before men and not attempt to hide it. So part of his light are these nine fruits of the Holy Spirit shining through an anointed believer. Non-believers are really drawn to someone who has uh, some degree of these nine fruits manifesting through their personalities. However, there is something extra special about the quality of goodness. Many Christians can effectively witness to others by just living right and being a good example and role model uh, for others to follow. Now, many non-believers carefully watch and study some Christians because they know there is something really different about them. One of the key qualities a non-believer will pick up on um, in a solid Christian um, is this quality of goodness. This quality has an ability to really get, get down deep into the core of a believer's personality. To those who 
really have this quality, you can tell that it is something operating deep down inside of them. This quality is not something that wavers like some, like some of the other qualities can do. These people are good down to their very cores of their personalities. You can see it and feel it when you get around these types of people. Now, as a result of seeing this godlike goodness uh, deeply ingrained into their personalities, there is an immediate drawing towards them. You feel totally safe being around them because you know you can totally trust them and you know they would never deliberately hurt you. Children are quickly to sense and pick up on this quality in people who really have it. These types of Christians draw children and adults to them like magnets. This is why uh, this particular fruit and quality is so important for some Christians to have because when because with it, you can easily draw many more people to the Lord. If the goodness of God will lead people to repentance and salvation with him, then the goodness of God operating through an anointed believer will have the ability to draw non-believers into the salvation. And the goodness of God can be transmitted and worked up into your personality through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now you can have the actual goodness of God shining through you to reach others if you are willing to work with the Holy Spirit in the sanctification process. Now here are some of the different definitions of what this quality is all about when it comes to goodness, okay? Benefit, ready to do good, love in action, kindness in actual manifestation, virtue, equipped for action, a bountiful propensity both to will and to do what is good, in turn skit, goodness, producing a generosity in a godlike state or being. The word benefits means to fact or quality of being kind or doing good. Now, this particular quality is a very powerful fruit to have operating in your uh, personality because of the drawing power it has um, in it. Um, and the beautiful part about this fruit is that this quality is so pure in its goodness. Um, it does not have any manipulative qualities within it. In other words, a truly good person uh, could not even begin to try and use you or manipulate you for their own personal gain because they are too good and righteous because they are too good and righteous to even begin to think along those lines. Now, this is why these kind of people are so trustworthy and why so many people are drawn to them because you feel so safe by just being around them. Now, let's go on to faithfulness, okay? Now, in the times we live in uh, with half of all marriages uh, still ending, in, ending up in divorce and with many people getting backstabbed in the workplaces with people um, they thought they could initially trust, this particular quality is one that is really needed in our day and age. Now, this quality is not only needed in our personal relationship with God, but it is also needed in our own personal relationships with our friends and our families. Now, once you um, once you have now, once you are saved and have entered into a true personal relationship with the Lord, one of the first things you will really have to grab a hold of is holding fast to the Lord and staying faithful to him for the rest of your eternal life. Now, once you are saved and have entered into a true personal relationship with the Lord, there is no turning back ever. Okay. This is what got the Jewish people in and major trouble with God, the father back in the Old Testament. They could not stay faithful and loyal to him on a consistent and regular basis. There were times that God, the father was literally calling them harlots and adulterers. Okay. Because they would not stay faithful to him, especially when they kept chasing after other gods. Now I have to insert this because I'm actually about to do a teaching on um, fraternities and sororities, Greek life. That tells you right there. 
that um, that's not of God, right? Um, you are worshiping other Greek gods because every sorority, every fraternity is connected to some kind of Greek um, representation, if you will, of that particular sorority, right? Um, and so that's another God. So you can't say that you're a child of God and you're in a fraternity or sorority. You, you, you can't because you are bowing down and you're honoring other gods before him. Now, God, the father really holds this particular quality in high esteem. And this is one quality that he will really expect you to operate very strongly in, not only in your own personal relationship with him, but also in your other personal relationships with your family and friends. Loyalty, faithfulness. In other words, he wants you to be faithful and loyal to your spouses, to your children, to your parents, and to your good friends. Okay, catch that. All right. Too many people are bailing out from their spouses and their children if they hit a few minor speed bumps in their marriages. Too many spouses are having affairs behind their spouse's back, thereby destroying all of the trust and faithfulness that may have been built up in the early years of their marriages. Too many fathers are bailing out on their marriages and then forgetting and forsaking their own children and sometimes for good, never wanting to see any of them ever again. Now, if God brings you a wonderful mate, wonderful children, and good and wonderful friends, then he will expect you to stay loyal and faithful to all of them in your own personal relationships with them. Now, a true friend will stay by your side for life through thick and thin and for better or for worse. Just as God will stay faithful to you in his own personal relationship uh, with you, he will expect you to stay loyal and faithful in your own personal relationships with the other people in your life. Now, here are some of the different Bible dictionary um, references and commentaries um, that have to say in regards to this particular quality of faithfulness. Um, fidelity, uh, which makes one true to his promise and faithful to his, um, to his task. Steadfast, dedicated, dependable, and worthy of trust steadfast, unchanging, and through and thoroughly grounded and um, grounded in relation to others, to the other. Dependability, loyalty, and stability. Now with the self-centered and materialistic world in which we now live in, uh, where many people's goal, many people's only goals and um, ambitions are to get as much as they can out of this life while they still can. Now I'm afraid this is one quality that is in low, uh, short of supply in, in these times. Now, most people are lucky if they manage to make two or three good, loyal and faithful friends in this lifetime. And that is so true. I just dealt with a situation to where I got close to people. And, I, and now I'm thinking that more so it was because of a project that we were sharing in now together, because since then, it's just been a, um, a, a dismantling of that whole friendship, if you will. And maybe it was never a friendship. Um, I just was, you know, assuming or I just was being hopeful and believing. Now, this is one quality that God the Father is really watching all of us on. He is watching who is going to stay true, loyal, and faithful to him. And who will stay true, loyal, and faithful to the friends and family that are brought into our lives. The flesh is strong, especially in the area of wanting to satisfy its lust for the material things of life. This is why the quality is one of the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. We all need the faithfulness of the Holy Spirit worked into us to help us keep loyal to God, family, and friends. Now, last spirit, fruit of the Spirit for this particular video is gentleness. Okay. Now, many men may draw back a bit from this next fruit. 
Okay, which is the quality of gentleness. However, Jesus was fully incarnate into a human flesh body. But this incarnation was done as a man, fully man and fully God. Now, since Jesus walked on uh, on earth um, as a man, the son of man study his actions very carefully. When you read the gospels and how he handled different types of people all right there were times okay now there were times that he would engage and set people straight okay like he did with some of the scribes and pharisees but there were other times that he dealt with people very gently with kindness and love okay and patience um, his gentle way of handling some of these people is what really jumps out at you when you really uh, study how he handled different types of people. Now, again, Jesus is the perfect role model of all of us to study and learn from, especially with how he handles people while he was walking down here on our earth for men in particular. His actions and behavior towards others should be a major study for all of us. And we should seek to pattern our own daily walk uh, um, after him. And one of the divine qualities that he had operating in him with great abundance was the quality of gentleness. The quality of gentleness is another major quality needed in our world today. So many people have been beat up and hurt in their dealings with other people that just a gentle word, a gentle touch from another Christian can really open up the door for that person to be able to receive Jesus and his healing, saving and deliverance power into their lives. And I actually talked about this. I want to say on, I think it was the first video that it was very, very intense these past couple of weeks and I was at my lowest point. I was, um, the enemy was, was beating me up in the physical, the spiritual, just a lot of things. And so he tried to get me in the natural, start trying to play suicidal thoughts in my mind, start having me question, um, uh, me hearing from the Lord and all these other different areas. And I had to lean on a sister in Christ and, um, because of her gentleness with me, um, because of her patience, because of her long suffering with me, um, I was able to receive the healing from the Lord by way of her encouraging words. So absolutely, gentleness will get you a long way. Now, once you really start walking in the Holy Spirit with his divine fruits operating and flowing through you, you will really be able to feel and sense when you um, should handle a certain person or a certain type of situation with more of a touch of gentleness rather than with any kind of stern rebuke or condemnation. And that is so true. Um, some things you do need to be stern with some things you do need to rebuke, you know, and, and, and handle. Um, but some things just need and require your gentleness. You don't need to handle everybody the same way, especially if you're trying to, um, have them receive right now, there is a time for tough love. But there are also times that just a gentle and loving touch is all that is really needed to properly handle a certain situation. Now, the Holy Spirit will guide you in all of this. Just realize that the quality of gentleness is one of the nine fruits of the Spirit. And this is one of the fruits that he would really like to get worked into your personality, especially in being able to use it when dealing with um, and helping uh, helping out others. Uh, parents especially need this fruit operating through them as it is very easy to get out of balance uh, with the way you are correcting your children. Uh, and I actually talked about this on, I want to say part one as well. Um, the word of God tells the children to honor their mother and their father for their days of, um, you know, for days to be added on to them, they'll live longer. However, the word of God also tells parents do not provoke your children to wrath, right? So even in discipline, you want to uh, seek the father and how you handle stuff. So that's why when you're finna discipline them, you don't just react. You gather up 
process and then you go to the father and you seek how you're supposed to properly affect um po- how you're properly supposed to discipline them because i can talk tell you about my personal um uh, demi is not like denim denim is not like demi for one they're opposite sex um but you know even in that we have two sons but denim is different from denim um i mean d- DJ is different from denim, you know, although they're different in age, but they're both male. But um, denim, uh, it's a um, it's a little harder, you know, so popping him as far as discipline kind of don't always work because he kind of eat it. OK, he look tough. You like, ah, got that. Yeah. What's up? What's next? Um, you know, um, my my eldest son, you, you can't really yell too much at him, but you can talk to him. And if you kind of use your words with him, it kind of affects him more. Demi is the same way. She doesn't like people too much yelling at her, um, you know, but it, even in your words, if you tell her that you're disappointed, that affects her more than you popping her. And she really doesn't get pops, you know what I'm saying? Because you can talk to her and she receives it. So absolutely, it's different approaches when when it comes to that. Now, if all your children ever hear from you are stern words of rebuke and criticism, and it is never properly balanced out with words and actions of love, kindness, and gentleness, then after a certain period of time, your children will start to pull away from you. And they then will have no more desire to want to establish any type of good, solid, loving relationship with you. Okay. Now here are the different, um, definitions, um, on the qualities of, uh, gentleness, right? Uh, mildness combined with tenderness, gracious, kindly disposition, controlled strength, a disposition that is even tempered, tranquil, uh, balanced in spirit, unpretentious, um, and that has passions under control. A character that is um, equipable, um, reasonable, forbearing, moderate, fair, and considerate, power and strength under control, willing to pardon injuries, correct faults, one who rules his spirit well. Now, not only will other people love and um, not only will people love and um gravitate towards you more if you learn how to walk in this quality, but you will be at much more peace with yourself since you won't always have to be fighting and striving with others when trying to help them out. So we're going to stop here. Um, and when we continue, we most doably will be finishing this particular teaching out with the last point, which is self-control. And I wanted to make it its own video because it's a deep, 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 um, it's, it's a good spirit, right? And this is something that, um, it's, we need to have prevalent in today's time and we don't. And so I just really just want to keen in and focus on that particular area, as well as I'm going to close out this particular particular teaching on that video. So I pray you guys join us for the continuation of the teaching of the nine fruits of the spirit. Thank you guys so very much. And I'll see you on the next video. Hey, Winnie D here. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you click the subscribe button if you have not done so already. And make sure you click that notification bell, move it for personalized all so you can receive all the updates that I place here on the channel. You can get all the notifications, okay? And make sure you connect with me on Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram. Well, all right, you guys. I love you, but most of all, God loves you. Until next time. I'm a brand new creature cause the only that I'm new. Yeah, I'm new.